go. Welcome to DJ Storybook. My name is Brian Murphy. This interview series is about how COVID has affected our lives in the arts community and beyond. Today we have a very special guest. I've known him, I, we'll have to kind of remind ourselves how long we've known each other, but pretty much a, almost half my life. Um, he, his, his talent is immeasurable. There's a show that we did, it's on my Plies by Murphy's DJ uh, link on the June, I think it was the June 19th show. The way he used this space is something that I have really never seen. The clarity, it almost like he was on a big stage. So without further ado, this is Matthew Roberts, a professional ballet dancer. Hi, Matthew. Hello. How's it going? It's going pretty well. So I, I want to talk about this piece that you did. Um, but I, I, I want to ask you though first, how, who, who are you as an artist? Oh, uh, let's see, I'm a, I'm a dancer and choreographer. I uh, have worked with a, a few uh, contemporary ballet companies and uh, I'm currently in Dallas, Texas, uh, working with a, a company called Bruce Wood Dance. And uh, it's just, I've just finished my first season with them. Uh, I moved here uh, the end of July, started with them August, um, and I'll jump back into uh, my second season with them come August 10th. Congratulations, and hopefully I will continue, you know. Um, yes. I actually, I'm glad you told me who you, what you did, but I'm actually, if, if I was an audience member, and I was to watch Matthew Roberts on stage, what are they gonna see? Hmm. I feel they would see kind of like a, a reflection of my heart in a sense, you know? Uh, I, I see things and I'm inspired and motivated and, uh, and pushed to, to share them or um, share perspective on them. And uh, I feel that's uh, one of the things I enjoy about dance, that I'm able to uh, share an idea and just open it up to the public and allow them to see it and interpret it, interpret it in their own way. And it's uh, awesome to see their response. Some, some take it this way, some take it that way. It's uh, uh, almost like a, a puzzle that they, they have to decipher. Uh, several ways they can go about figuring it out. Uh, but the, the result is, is always correct because it's their own. You know, let's take, let's take some of the things you said about inspira inspiration from the heart. And when COVID-19 happened, our, our, our date for when we closed things down here was March the 14th or whatever, in mid-March time. Mm -hmm. What was going through your mind and how did you deal with it at that moment? And here we are almost four months later. How are you now? Well, um, I was actually visiting Ohio. Um, the week of my birthday, which was March 11th. And so I was, I was very uh, close to and worried about being stuck in Ohio and not being able to make it back uh, in time for work because work back here with the company was still um, going on. We had a guest choreographer in and uh, she was gonna be setting uh, um, a dance, a Lauren Lubavitch dance on us. And so I was very excited to, to be a part of that. Um, so I made it back home uh, to Dallas um, just when things started shutting down in Ohio. And um, a week later, things started shutting down here in Dallas. So our time with the choreographer was cut short and uh, we were, were hoping to pick it back up come August. Uh, but we had just a few, uh, few rehearsals in the studio and um, we only allowed a small amount of the company to be a part, uh, be a part of that because that and COVID was, uh, it was known at that time. Uh, and then skip four months later, um, we, during that time, the, the company uh, eventually slowed down and then we stopped uh, meeting in the studio, just kind of meeting up online, still taking classes. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a shock, it was different. Uh, everyone, everyone went through changes and we had to adjust and adapt. It, uh, the first maybe one first or two months we were like okay like this is okay it'll get back to normal after this and everything will be fine and come the third and fourth month we realized that's that wasn't the case and 
uh, things were just getting worse. So uh, eventually the company stopped um, and finished the season. And then um, during the time I was still working uh, at GameStop, like on and off when it was open and closed, and eventually I got moved to uh, the warehouse and started working there. And so my days are, are different now. Uh, the first two months of COVID, I mean, almost three months, and uh, I was taking class, uh, just creating little dances in my apartment, um, posting social medias for uh, posts for the company. And uh, after that, no, not as much um, time with the company and more time just like working a, working a regular nine to five kind of job. You know, it, you made a good point, Matthew. It's where we all got into this place where we were like gung ho and doing all this. And it's almost like we're in this law period right now. Like we've come to this realization maybe, or we're, we're subconsciously thinking that we, this is a long haul situation. This isn't like tomorrow is gonna be done. You know, we're just in it for the long haul. Um, so it, you know, the two pieces that you created on the, for the virtual performances were very into like how you use your space. Talk about some of that creativity that you did. Yeah, so the first one, um, like the, my idea was like this labyrinth. It's what I felt my apartment was. We were all stuck in our houses and seeing the same walls every single day. And I felt like I was just walking this maze and not getting, not getting to the end. And, uh, and so that's kind of what I uh, thought to title these series. And uh, I knew there was a album by David Bloch, uh, my mess his name up, uh, and it was titled Labyrinth. And it was a, a few uh, scriptures that he sung uh, and made his own tune out of them. Uh, and I had heard them a while ago and uh, enjoyed them a lot because they kind of helped with me memorizing them. Uh, and so I saw that I was like, oh, I've been meaning to make, a, make dances to these songs for so long. Uh, I feel this would be a great time. And I felt it was a good time to do like a lot of self-reflecting. And everyone handled this in different ways. And uh, some people uh, like were at, a, at one point, while other people were still like, oh, I'm not cool with this. I'm not all right. And some people were like, yeah, this is fine. I can get used to this. And so I, the, I dedicated that first one to um, just resting uh, and because that's, that's kind of what we were all forced to do. We couldn't, we couldn't get out there. That and, is uh, true. <laughs> yeah, and so forced rest isn't always uh, easy to accept. Wait, wait, uh, forced rest. I like that. It's forced rest. Okay, yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's so true. It's true. I don't have a choice. Um, but that was that one. And then um, my, the company just kind of towards the end, throughout the last two months, we were doing video projects and we had one big one that we were gonna do. And um, uh, I was presented with an opportunity to do a solo and it was at a, uh, a hotel. So it was a site specific, which I, I love. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I decided to create one and they, they said, um, you're gonna have to do it at this hotel, but you're, they require that you're gonna have to wear a mask. I was like, okay, so, <laughs> so I, uh, I had to wear a mask. Um, you know, one of my coworkers who, who uh, created the project idea uh, made a, a Bruce Wood mask for me to wear. And uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, like all the masks, they're stuffy. And so I underestimated how, how um, uh, tough it would be to breathe while dancing. Uh, but that's that's kind of where the idea for that one, uh, which is the same one I did uh, for our last the last show in uh, on the night. Uh, and so there's used to that that motif yeah. of hands, and uh, I I think I told you for the show that the idea was uh, they recommended singing a song or like they they get they had like songs to sing or like hum while you're washing your hands to make sure it's like 20 seconds, uh, and so that was one I was like oh this is a really happy song but it's not so much a happy time, you know? So I had that, I wanted to do that juxtaposition of um, something really like upbeat and not, not so much upbeat, but like lighthearted in a sense um, and almost somber with this uh, idea of like con constantly having to um, keep up with safety measures and uh, precautions and um, 
staying on guard against uh, the, the disease and, or the virus and the, the pandemic. So I was able to transition that hotel one into the, the so, car. And again, I want to remind everybody to go onto my, um, my website, Flies by Murphy's, and go to the DJ and go to the June 19 show and, and check it out. It's one of the it's it's a, a phenomenal piece, Matthew. It's really neat. Um, and I, I want to transition to talk about um, who we are as artists. And we, as you know, there's a lot of cultural things going on in this in this country and really the world. And it's a phenomenal thing to watch. It's phenomenal. Um, and I say that in a in both in both ends. Um, and I, I feel like we are in a place that we that the, the energy is going right into the change. But I, I, I do know that what I feel as the change happened is 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 potentially different than your change. I mean, as as a as a white man, I'm watching it in, in this in, interesting kind of outside place and not really understanding what a black man goes through. So talk to us about what is it like to watch this experience in a, from a black man's point of view? Hmm. It's, it's tough. It's definitely tough. Um, I, I want to, I'm trying to keep a, uh, a positive and Christian outlook uh, about it. And uh, there's just so much uh, negative responses to it. Um, and you, I, I constantly have to fight the urge to, uh, to, to do that because it's kind of our, almost our gut response. Uh, we have like this almost nature we feel of when we're wronged or uh, when injustice is done to us, we like, we want justice. Like we, we ought to make them pay or make them know. Um, and it's, uh, I'm trying to maintain a, uh, a headspace of, uh, giving back love uh, and um, not so much being so much so judgmental or uh, pointing a finger and uh, asking everyone like, hey, look at this or uh, take part in this or say something about this, but just to kind of open it up and, and be like, well, we're all, we're all at fault. Like we're all human. We all have uh, kind of a, a uh, uh, sinful nature like we've all done wrong and uh, no one's a perfect person uh, and I don't think I think the the racial equality is a, a bad thing uh, but it's not the it's not the biggest problem I think our uh, that that problem would be just like seeing everyone um, as as a neighbor or as a human as uh, even uh, me seeing a, another black person as the same I see as uh, as you and so there, there should be no no difference uh, between it. And, uh, I think it was great because I was able to uh, discuss this with the dance company, mm. and we were able to have a conversation about it uh, because there was there was one day where I really struggled with it. Uh, I had had uh, difficulty with the cops when I was living up in Ohio, just. Uh, and so when I came here, I was like, okay, I'm doing great. Like, there's no problem at all. Uh, and then this started happening and I just was like, okay, well, I don't bother them. They won't bother me. Uh, and there was one day where I just heard my, my neighbor like calling out and screaming. And I was like, oh, I should go out and see what's happening. And uh, like suddenly there was this, this fear that I hadn't felt before uh, of getting like roped into a situation and not being able to control it. And then I was like, if I, if, I don't, if I lose control, then there's nothing I can do to like, protect myself. And uh, it made me it made me stay inside and not go out to even see what was wrong. Uh, and it was at that point that I realized, oh, this is definitely affecting me more than I thought. Um, I hadn't had that kind of fear uh, of a that uh, authority um, before. So uh, I discussed that with my company and. Uh, we were able to give a lot of uh, feedback in our own, their own personal stories. Uh, it was very helpful to hear and as well as, as share that. Uh, but it's, it's been tough that things have been escalating, uh, it seems, and uh, with the protests and uh, just attacks and uh, just the, the videos that are popping up are, are just painful to watch. 
And I think it's uh, I think it's important that we we don't let things. I mean, they're they're already out of hand, but we don't uh, try and take things into our own hands. You know, uh, I think the the best thing we can do is uh, to continue to give love and forgiveness to people because that's uh, that's what's going to to fix things. I know uh, people say like the 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 vote is the one thing that will change this or getting getting people out of power and um, but there, there, there's always going to be those people. So if we don't uh, love them where they're at, then uh, it doesn't matter where they go. You know, is that if that makes sense? It does I, I think that as a society, we need to we recognize color, but 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 we are also recognized as 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 people people. Okay, that's just what it is. We we look at whatever color or race or whatever it is we see it but we also and and we see people we see people mm -hmm. and i think uh, i think that's what i think that's what you're saying and it's 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 something that we have to remind us we have to remind ourselves but then after time you don't remind yourself i mean i don't remind myself okay i have but sometimes you this is reminding you that we are people still we are still people and to love each other. Yeah. And you know, and the finish is off here. And this is just a really nice conversation, Matthew. And, and I'm glad that we're sharing this with everybody here. Is as an artist, I have felt a responsibility to do this project, to perform, find ways to communicate what is going on in this world. I feel a sense of responsibility. Do you feel that respons responsibility or is this just, I mean, how do you, what do you think about resp our responsibility? Uh, for me, I think, uh, I feel more of a responsibility as like a, as a Christian to express that point of view. And um, artists are gonna make work about history. It's what they do. They make work about the times, something happens, I'm gonna make some art about it. <laughs> true. <laughs> what we do. Uh, I, I noticed. I, I mean, I've noticed that throughout. But I saw that during COVID, and I saw. I, I started to note like people are gonna make art about this pandemic, uh, and it's gonna be um, art that kind of lifts people up. It, or it can be art that you know knocks people down and they can same thing with the, the racial inequality like people are going to make art and it can be art that lifts people up or art that kind of kind of shows hatred um, and not so much that it um, it doesn't showcase hatred it it speaks hatred mm -hmm. uh, and there's 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 a difference mm -hmm. and so I, I just kind of ask myself like what what do you want to be known for uh, making uh, when you're under pressure, when you're under um, like these trials, when you're uh, when you're faced with uh, it's such a fear you have never encountered before, when you're trying to uh, self-evaluate yourself, uh, when your circumstances are completely flipped up and the job you had is no longer the job you have. Uh, like what kind of what kind of art are you going to portray? And um, for me, it was um, I can't. I want to create something that uh, shares my experience, my feelings, my heart. Um, but in the end, I always want it to kind of point to God and say, like, no matter how bad it's getting. Um, I can't, uh, I can't give in and uh, give up, and I have, but I can't stay down. You know, I, I'm always like picked back up, and that's kind of what I'm. I want to for people to uh, kind of take away, and so uh, I've created things that are just 
they are seemingly very uh, low or negative or depressing. Um, but, and people are like, are you okay? Like, I just saw what you posted. It seems like you're going through stuff. I'm like, well, yeah, I was, and I danced about it. And now, now I'm better because yes. <laughs> I, I made it. I, it's over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, I know, I know you mean. Exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, so, I love that's, what, that's what I feel that I'm, I'm called to. I'm called to, to, to um, like pull back and show my heart. That's uh, because when, when you're putting your heart into the art, that's, I feel that's when it's really strong and people are really connecting. And you're like, wow, like I, he's being really open and transparent and honest and I can kind of relate, you know? Just, people know it. Matthew, yeah. it's just people know when you are completely exposing yourself. And then when you do that, people go, they, they grab onto it. And then that's when it becomes this, and you know, um, and that could be the quote unquote responsibility. We don't even know it, but just the, the, the idea of creating, the idea of being an artist and mm -hmm. just creating, either they put that person in that one place and just be able to, ah, oh, or, Oh, or whatever it is that, like you said earlier, it doesn't matter, whatever they got out of it. Yeah. I actually do believe though, Matthew, now is the time that art is really important. I do believe that. I, I, I do, and I, responsibility is maybe that's the right word, but, but art, music, dance, theater, uh, drawings, all those things, people are craving now. It just, they need that outlet. Yeah. And I, and, and this is what's all about listening to somebody like listening to you talk about what's like to be an artist or listening. They're going, Oh, they have the 10 minutes of going away from everything. And they just listen to you. They didn't realize it. That's what, that's what art's about. They don't even realize time. Yeah. That's so important now. What, um, uh when COVID was happening and places were closed, closing, they're like, let's leave the uh, essential workers in business. And I was like, you know, art's, art's a little essential, isn't it? It's been, it's, 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 ah, kind, of yes. shown, it's kind of shown how essential it is in, 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 in this time. It totally is. And I think that there's not too much of it out there either. I don't think there's too much. I think there's enough for everybody. I mm -hmm. totally believe that. I totally believe that. So, Matthew, thank you so much for having such a heartfelt conversation. This was a heartfelt conversation. So um, without further ado, we're going to go. Thank you so much. This is DJ Storybook. I'm Brian Murphy. This wonderful special guest, Matthew Roberts, he just, you know, rewind it. Listen to him again. There's a lot of wonderful things. And you've got to check out some of the shows on my website. Check him out. He's very good. And hopefully he'll come back. I don't know. Okay. I'm coming back. You're coming back. You're coming back. All right, Matthew. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.